Hi, I'm here at the King Street Laundry. My name is Sandy Baird, and we are at this laundry at the good graces of the owner of the building, Andrew Christensen. And he has decided to make this very nice laundry into also public space where we could do public events, especially with those events which affect this neighborhood. And that's the reason we're here tonight, because if there's any neighborhood that's going to be um, impacted by the Southern Connector, this is it. We are at King Street. Um, and if you've seen our map that we also have been part of this show, it will show that this neighborhood, a rather moderate income neighborhood full of people of color, this is the neighborhood where the Southern Connector will course through this neighborhood and have the greatest impact on, on this place. With me tonight is Steve Goodkind, who is the former civil engineer of the city, 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 city engineer of the city of Burlington. He was the original project director for the uh, Southern Connector, correct? Well, the, the last. The last project director. director. <laughs> and who was the mayor at that time? I was the project director when Bob Kiss was mayor and for a short time when Mira Weinberger was the mayor. Okay, so um, anyway, we're here to discuss the current status of the Southern Connector and also where do we go from here about it? And Steve, as I mentioned, was the city engineer under all the mayor, under all the mayors, right? Starting, with, starting with Bernie. Perfect. Starting with Bernie and then with Peter Clavel and then with, I guess, who else? Brunel, Brunel. Clavel, Kiss, Weinberger. And Moreau Weinberger. Yeah. Okay, so Steve, Bring us up to date. There's a legal status, right? Well, just to note, I think you said it earlier, if there's a, a ground zero for the traffic from the Southern Connector, we're sitting right next to it right now. King what do you Street, mean by that? Traffic from this highway will be increased as it passes and it will pass through this neighborhood. In other words, unlike what the original intention of the project was where it would go around the neighborhood, now it's going through okay, the neighborhood. Okay, so we're in the King Street and... Pine King, and Pine, King and Pine neighborhood, right on the corner, right. right? And so, could you describe a little bit more of what you're? Well, just what as it's an example, do? the traffic in the south end of the project, streets like Home and Flynn, the traffic is projected to decrease by over seventy percent. Decrease. Decrease when the if road this is, highway when is, the highway is constructed and open, uh, traffic will be uh, reassigned from those streets and will take this this new roadway. Mm -hmm. At this end of the project, where there really isn't a new roadway, just some, some it's going to uh, end here. I won't call them even improvements. Some things will be done to the roadway up here, but the traffic will come into this end of town and there'll be a 38% increase in traffic mm -hmm. from this roadway. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the, the flip side of the coin. And in, now you mentioned what what's the legal issue here? Well, wait a minute. So oh, it, could you, we have a map. I don't know if we're capable of showing yeah. that, are we? Okay, so, and we had a map on our flyer. So maybe you could uh, maybe explain the map a little There's bit. There's a map on the screen, people can see it. Yeah, so, so they're seeing that map. If you look at the left side, there's a yellow line. It's got a big bend in it. That's the south end of the project. And in fact, part of that line, the, the part that's farthest to the left, that's what we call the road to nowhere. I think most people in Burlington that have been down to the south end it seems what looks like a interstate highway, but it's, it seems to be abandoned. It's overgrown. Nobody uses it. Sometimes cars are parked on it. That's a piece of this project that was built in about 1985, 1986, but never opened because it never connected anything. If you follow that yellow line, it makes a big bend and it heads to the right. That's the part of the project that they're building right now. Mm -hmm. But there's one caveat to that. It does not connect to the road to nowhere. So in other words, if that that solid yellow line would have a gap in it. And they're not intending to open that until this entire roadway is completed and a project called the um, Rail Enterprise Project, I'll we'll talk about that in a second, is opened. So anyway, the project continues from left to right and you see it's got a sharp bend and it makes another bend, that's Lakeside Avenue. At that point, the roadway is going to start going to stop being a new road it's going to be improvements call them improvements uh changes are going to be made to the existing road to lakeside avenue and then to pine street as we continue north to main street main street okay right and that's the that's the project as configured now also on your map 
you can see in the top right, I believe, you'll see like an orange line, kind of a curved mm -hmm. orange line. Yep. That is the rail enterprise project. That's where it will be if it ever what happens. What is it? The... It's, it was, it's actually a piece of the original project that we now call the Champlain Parkway or Southern Connector. When I was the project manager, we did an environmental impact statement and got a record of decision that had our, a project that didn't look like this. Instead of that last little piece of yellow line to the far right, the project followed that orange line mm -hmm. and it went around the neighborhood. It went around this neighborhood. Around so it neighborhood. didn't, it didn't unfairly it or un it didn't impact unwisely. It, all. Like it took traffic out of the neighborhood, it took, just like okay. it's going to do in the south end. And that had been, that had been really the basis of this project from day one. This project has had many different variants. Uh, I think maybe people have heard about the Pine Tree Barge Canal one time. It was going to yep. go through that. That's not going to happen. There was designs that had this roadway out over the water, the waterfront. But every concept of this project, this Champlain Parkway, or what I call the Southern Connector Project, every version of it from back in the 70s always was meant to go around this neighborhood. And, and why? Did. Why? That's what the city, I think, truly believed should happen. We didn't want to put a road through a neighborhood. We wanted to put the roads around the neighborhood and, in fact, get the traffic out of the neighborhood, not push more traffic through it. Uh -huh. And that's been the mantra for the city from day one of this project. And no version ever showed it going up Pine Street all the way to Main Street until about 2008 when the federal government told us that they would only build the project if we did it that way. Okay, well, let's get to that because I'd like to know why that change occurred. But so this is why there was a lawsuit, is that correct? Lawsuit comes later. Lawsuit okay. comes in about 2016 or so. All right. So but, how many but, lanes is this as well? Well, let's go back. The project started out like, well, there's something called an MEGC project. These are projects that were devised back in the 70s. Right. It stands for um, Municipal Economic Growth Center. Yeah. And the idea was to build highways in such a way as to encourage the growth of urban centers. centers right. Burlington is one of them. These, these projects usually involve some kind of a, what we call a ring road. If you ever look at a map of Boston or Houston, you'll see there's an interstate, there's an interstate that goes to the city, but then there's a, a series of ring roads that go around the city. Right. And those kind of connect other parts of the city to the interstate. Vermont didn't really have an urban center like a Boston or a Houston or something like that, or Chicago, but they did want to build some kind of a ring road system somewhere in the state and Chittenden County was a logical place. Mm -hmm. So they conceived of a, a series of projects that essentially would create a ring road. Around by, the city. By 289 in Essex is part right, of it. Right. By 189 mm -hmm. in the south end of Burlington and out in South Burlington, that's part of it. The circumvention highway, which I think most people have heard about, but it never got built. It, right. In fact, was, the project has been changed drastically from what it was gonna be, but that was gonna be the link. So you would have had this continuous ring road around Burlington and then the Southern Connector and the Northern Connector were going to complete the ring wonderful. They did it it. at the Western edge yeah. and the, near the waterfront. And in fact, the Northern Connector is also part of that ring road system. So some of it exists. The, the Circumvention Highway, the biggest piece though, was not going to happen as a limited access highway. By limited access highway, think of an interstate. Uh -huh. It doesn't have curb cuts or driveways or buildings on it. It's, it's a road with limited access only at certain points. Mm -hmm. Usually involves higher speed travel. Right. The, just to say what happened to this, the uh, Circumvential Highway, they made, the, the opponents made a case that that was not necessary. It really needed was a road that would be what we call now a complete street, a yeah. road that everyone would use. Would be, Bicycles. Yeah, it's just more usable and not be this obstacle going through the area, yeah. but something which was an integral part of it. And the state eventually said, yes, that's what we'll do. And that's what I think they're still planning on doing. You would have thought at the same time, they would have looked at the Southern Connector and said, well, isn't that really the same? It's just another piece of the same project. Right. Shouldn't we do the same thing here? Build a complete street. But no. How come? When, so when you they say- They didn't want to do it. They just why? did not okay, want to do so it. So what is it then? How many lanes? How Well, it depends where you're looking at it. Here's an important thing to note. Originally, it was going to be a four-lane limited access highway, very similar to 189. Uh, not a lot like 289 because it only 289 only has really two or three lanes. This is going to be a four lane and maybe five or six lanes at the intersections. 
That's what it really proposed. Back in the 90s, Scott Johnson was a public works director. I was city engineer. And Scott thought, we all thought this road was just overdone, overbuilt. And he persuaded the state that it should be downsized to uh -huh. basically a two lane road instead of a four lane road, mm -hmm. one lane in each direction. And the state eventually agreed with that. Mm -hmm. And so the road in different areas has different widths from, from well, the road to nowhere from Shelburne Road to Home Avenue. That road is basically like an interstate. It's got the, the four lanes uh -huh. right now, at least, even though they're decrepit. From Home Avenue to Lakeside was also going to be a four lane affair, mm -hmm. but now it's going to be a two lane mm -hmm. road and then wider at the intersections. Mm -hmm. And then Pine Street will be what Pine Street is now, though it may in some places have a third lane for turning yeah. and be more of a complete street. So it's, it's kind of been cut in half in size mm -hmm. from what it originally was conceived as. But there's one other caveat to that. From home to Flint Avenue, there are businesses, there's homes, there's the need for driveways and access. Right. So you can't just put a limited access highway through there and not do something with the existing streets. So they have to rebuild and replace the streets on the, stiff, on the two sides of the connector so that there'll be a way to have access to the buildings on that side. They call them service roads. Okay. And so, so what you're really gonna have is a two lane service road on one side, a two to four lane limited access in the middle, and then on parts of the other side, another two lane road. Wow. So this thing could be as wide as six, even seven or eight lanes wide in areas. It's pretty crazy. Wow. And it's not a, and, it and that's not being done in other places either. Not right? anymore. It was not anymore, commonly done. Right? You can go around this country and you can see places where this was done Portland. 50, 60 years ago. Portland, Oregon. No one's doing this now. No one. No one is doing this now. We're the last ones. And I think what it really boils down to, it really boils down to the reason we're doing it is personalities. And it's personalities at the Federal Highway Administration uh, district office in Montpelier. They just will not let this thing go and be changed the same way that say the circumvention highway was changed mm -hmm. they just want it to be built Why? be done with they want oh, the MEGC they want funding to be they want it to be done they just want it out of their hair we have a question, have a question. go ahead uh, can steve talk about the storm water retention fund currently being yes built? yes who is that question from is Diane it, Gale. yeah right the project does some things that are positive and have nothing to do with being a road or not. In the lower, air, um, to the downslope areas of Flynn, Home, Lyman Street, Foster Street, they've had flooding down there during heavy storms for years. And part of what this project would do when it passes through that area is it's going to put a stormwater system in for the roadway and it's going to pick up those streets also. So. One thing it can do is it can uh, alleviate stormwater problems in some of those neighborhoods. And the ponds are designed to treat that stormwater before it's discharged back into Inglesby Ravine or into Lake Champlain. So that part of the project is good and actually could be a standalone. You could do that without building the road at all and it would work just as well. Now, the other thing to remember about this though is they're also doing, under the guise of stormwater, they're putting in what I call a bridge. It's a giant culvert that is going to allow the roadway to cross Anglesby Brook. That part of the project has nothing to do with stormwater. It doesn't treat. It doesn't divert. It doesn't in any way do anything to be beneficial to the lake as far as stormwater is concerned. It's just a bridge. It's just to allow Anglesby Ravine to pass through this large culvert and a road to be built on top of it. So there's a couple of things going on down there now. They're building a stormwater system, which could benefit some of those neighborhoods, whether the road is built or not. And then they're doing this major project at Anglesby Ravine, which has absolutely nothing to do with stormwater. It's totally for the road. And that's where most of the work is going on right now. Okay, we, well, we thought, by the way, the court had told them they could not do okay, anything. Okay, well, let's get to this, that. Let's get to yeah. that. Diane, does that answer your question or do you have another one? Well, of course, I have lots of questions, but um, I think can't hear you, oh, you can't hear. I'm I can unmuted. barely hear you. You hope you can hear us better than I can hear you. I can totally hear you. Good. 
Okay. Do you know um, what the question was, Eric? I didn't ask the question yet. I didn't ask the question yet. Keep going with with where Steve was headed on the um, TRO. Yeah, but we thought the judge had issued an order saying. Okay, but let's that, go back. Why are well, there judges well, let me ask, involved? Let me ask the question. Okay. We thought at a recent hearing before a judge at our case, and we'll talk about the case in a minute. But we thought the judge had said that they could this construction season only do clearing and grubbing, that means cutting down trees and clearing out stumps and brush and installing this stormwater system, which would be beneficial to the community, even if there was no road. And we thought the judge was pretty clear that's what he would let them do. They've, like I said, I'll say this again, the road has changed twice now in the say last 20 years. The first was it was originally gonna go through the Pine Street Barge Canal. That route would have taken it directly north and south about two or 300 feet to the west of Pine Street, completely new road. But the problems with the barge canal turned out to be insurmountable and no road is ever gonna be built through there. And Scott Johnstone was the public works director and I was city engineer. Scott came up with a proposal that we would go around the barge canal, use Pine Street, and then in the vicinity of Curtis Lumber in the old street department yard, we would turn back to the west again through the rail yard into Battery Street and thus continue to avoid the King Maple Street neighborhood, which in the original design would have been completely bypassed. So that's one change. Then in about 2007, the federal government said, the only way we're gonna support this project is if you don't go through the rail yard, but just go straight up Main Street through the King Maple Street neighborhood. Like, like and it is that's now. the way it's gonna be. And they basically said, take it or leave it. If you don't like that, then there's no project. And we tried to fight that process for about two or three years. And finally, at the end, they said, if you don't stop fighting this, we're gonna stop paying all the bills. We're gonna basically shut you down. And eventually what was, it, what was written as a decision by the federal government is this road will go from Lakeside Avenue to Pine Street and from Pine Street all the way to Main Street. And that's the project now through this that's neighborhood. That's the way it is. Through this neighborhood. Okay. I think everybody in the city that was involved with the project was disgusted with that but there didn't seem to be at the time another choice of what we could do. We so, take it right, so in your view, then the problem is, is that going through the neighborhood and having this huge impact on this neighborhood, Correct. For, which was not part of the original. For 30 thinking. years, it was never part of various designs of this project, never a part of it. This and, is the last, I'll tell you, a last minute thing. And the reason I believe is, this is what I think is, I think it's actually a personal thing. I mentioned this MEGC funding earlier. What mm -hmm. that funding does it provides 95% federal money for highway projects, 3% state, two for city. That percentage for the city is very, very low, very mm -hmm. advantageous. Normally cities pay 10 to 20%. Mm -hmm. So five to 10 times as much as we're gonna pay for this road. So that gave this road kind of legs. Mm -hmm. But the project has gone on for so long and all the Vermont MEGC projects went on for so long, none of them were ever built. And now when the new, Federal Highway Administrators come to Vermont, the first thing they want to know is about these MEGC projects, it's like the last of the dinosaurs. No other state has these, these projects as active projects anymore. And back in the 2000s, the Federal Highway Administrator at the time said, he's going to get this off the books. We're going to get this uh -huh, thing done. Uh -huh, okay. It's, so they just want to say it's he done. He wanted it done, and that's why he did this. He thought this that was the quickest way to get it done. Okay, but okay, so... Are, is that all right? But I'm going to go on to the legal yeah. challenge that you have brought. Well, just as a lead into it, even the city at the time, just. Who was the mayor? When... This was the mayor. Nobody wanted this. We had fought it for three years to take, for them to take this decision back and let us go with a route that went around the neighborhood. And finally, they just wouldn't do it. The city says, okay, if, if the only so... way you can have any part of the project is to do that way, we'll do it. I don't think that was a good decision. Um, and that was under did. the Weinberger? No, that was Kiss. Kiss. Now, well, to his credit, and I have many disagreements with Mayor Weinberger, but he recognized that going through the neighborhood was not a good thing. Okay, so then what happened? Now it's going well, through the neighborhood. He, had, he, he picked up on something we were trying to do in the last waning days of Kiss administration and come up with another reason to still take the roadway through the rail yard to Battery Street. And he came up with a bigger version of that and promoted it. 
and that project is somewhat alive right now, though it's many, many years away from being completed. If that project is completed, it's the rail enterprise project, that would take the traffic and take it around this neighborhood, just like our well, plans used to do it. Uh, it's almost identical to it. And that's a project that they're doing this kabuki yeah, but, dance so, now. Okay, so, so that project can happen. Normally that project wouldn't even be considered because it was rejected in an earlier process. You can't mm -hmm. keep bringing old stuff mm -hmm. back. Anyway, that's where it, it stood. Now, in 2016, a group, I was a member of it, Pine Street Pine Coalition, Street Coalition right. filed a lawsuit against the project. And the project looked like it was about to go to construction then. And the lawsuit contended a bunch of things. Some of them were environmental concerns about the project down in the South End. And one of them was a concern about environmental justice. Okay, so this is kind of a new idea, this environmental well, justice or not? not? New. Uh -huh. We were challenging the Fed's decision to go up Maple and up through Maple, King, and Pine. We raised the concern about environmental justice. Which is what? What does it mean? Environmental justice says you don't build a federal project through a low income or minority or both neighborhood. And this is it. This qualifies as one. And that's the reason, without using the term environmental justice, that was always the city's position. You're not going to put this through this neighborhood. We never wanted to do that. Like, like that this was an idea that was rejected by prior developers in for 1997 right? i was project manager we did an environmental impact statement and got a record of decision from the federal government during that process they asked us if we would consider a route that went up maple to maple pine and king and we mm -hmm. said no we because of this and it just went away okay so the the, the theory when, to, when 10 years later when we did the next had we do another eis and the same question came up and we said again, no, you know, we don't want to do this. This is not, this project doesn't not want fair. Anything, not, Well, we didn't say that. We just said, this is not what we want to do. We've rejected it before. And we thought they would just, again, take it off the table. Because instead, instead, they said, no, not only is it off the, not going to be off the table, that is the route you're going to have to do. That's how it came down. Wow. And, but uh, there are principles, aren't there, in the law that well, state that federal projects. There were principles in, say, 2009, mm -hmm. but they weren't strong other environmental concerns in the environmental documents could supersede them mm -hmm. lower let's say there yeah. was a it was a historic neighborhood versus a environmental justice issue neighborhood mm -hmm. the historic neighborhood could override that okay so but when obama became president they changed that and they strengthened those laws uh -huh. and now they do <coughs> trump just about everything else this and idea of environmental justice correct and correct. in our lawsuit that was a big part of it and to i think everyone's surprised. The federal government, through their federal attorney in Burlington, responded saying, you've got five issues, plaintiffs. Four of them we think we're good with. We don't think there's any issue there. We know you've raised the issues, but we think we're great. But he said, your environmental justice complaint is valid. We Who don't said think that? this is a federal attorney representing the state and the, or the federal government on this project. Okay. And he said that your environmental justice concerns have merit and the review they did of environmental justice back in say 2007 or 8 doesn't pass muster today mm -hmm. and since the project hasn't been built you've got to, those rules apply so make a long story short and i don't know if this ever happened anywhere else before but the federal government rescinded their record of decision which decided it was going to go the project would go up maine mm -hmm. blah 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 they went back and said you got to do your environmental impact stuff again and we have to issue a new record of decision and we'll see what comes out of that. So that was for us a huge victory. Yeah, sure. We didn't even really, we filed court papers, but we didn't have a trial. They yeah, right. basically conceded here, right. on that right. issue. But as always seems to happen, the then when the state and the feds and the city bureaucrats got a hold of this thing, they basically did what I would just call a whitewash. I mean, they, they went through what looked like the motions, but didn't change a thing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. said it was always okay. Mm -hmm which is really counter to the what the federal attorney had even said when he said, wait a minute, it doesn't pass muster. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, now it passes muster. Okay, so <laughs> you were, is, are there any comments or questions at this point? Uh, no, uh, uh, Christopher? Chris? Well, I, well, I think and one thing to note is when the record of decision was rescinded, that was the golden opportunity for all the people involved in the project to redo it and mm -hmm. do it the way they wanted. 
the mayor, who I said knows better about this, that was his opening to say, okay, let's do this let's right get now. It done. Let's do yeah. a modern project, a complete street. Let's deal with the environmental justice. Let's get the project out of the neighborhood. Could have done all of that. Instead, with his state and federal allies, they just hunkered down and said, we're not changing anything. Uh -huh. And went forward. They were just given the keys to the kingdom mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and they would not take it and run with it. They just hunkered down and doubled down and said, we're not changing anything. Okay, so now where are we at? Let's go back to this legal case yeah. that the Pine Street Coalition filed. Yeah. Well, and what was the basis? To our, well, the basis was there were about five or six things, but one of them was environmental justice. And I think that's what in Texas. That was the one that you thought was the strongest. I think that's strong. The judge, even in one of the hearings that was held, he indicated he thought that was our strength. Mm -hmm. uh, and I still think it is. Which the, is essentially that low income and minority neighborhoods, which have always been impacted most by development projects, should not be, correct? Cannot be, cannot be I, I'm trying to the exact word, it's not unduly. Unequitably. Un, well, something like that. Yeah. In other words, you don't remove traffic from a affluent neighborhood and put it into a lower right. neighborhood. You don't right. build a coal plant to light the hill section of the city in a low income or minority right. neighborhood. You don't do those kind of things. You don't undo Because it's not ethical it. in a way, right? Well, whatever you want to call it, it would be illegal. Yeah. That's what it is. Forget about ethics. It's You just don't do that anymore. But it was commonly done in the past. It's done all over the place. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a coincidence that the McNeil generating plant, which is closed now, the old coal right. plant, is where it is. Mm -hmm. And if you lived in the, then it was a moderate income neighborhood, just downwind of it. I used to live there. Well, and every well, morning you wake up and you'd find the black soot all over everything. Mm -hmm. and, but that's where they built these things. Yeah, that's right. You didn't build right, it in right, the hill right, section. Exactly. Uh, exactly. You want to build uh, the new McNeil plant, it's near the old North End. Mm -hmm. It's not in the new North End, mm -hmm. it's near the old North End. And that's where you build these things. Mm -hmm. We don't do that anymore. There's laws against that. And this thing, so that's seem, the this thing would seem to violate those laws. Okay, so you've been to many hearings on this, right? Some, yes. All right. So there haven't been a lot of hearings. No, correct. How come? They control the process and they Who don't control the process. The, People are building the road, the city, okay. state, federal government, mm -hmm. and they set the hearing schedule. So there aren't a lot of hearings. Mm -hmm. There's been a couple, and there's been a big, a long record of what was said at those hearings, and they had to respond to answer those what was said at the hearings. And if you look at what they, they basically just blew everything off. They mm -hmm. just said everything's okay. That's the only way. Except I can that this, it. okay. So you are continuing in court. It's not over, right? What was we, well, back in June, quite unexpectedly, the judge listened to some of our arguments and issued a temporary restraining order to stop the project. Period, just stopped it. Well, stop it, not forever, just stop it at that moment. Right. They're about to go to construction. Yeah. And he was persuaded by Again, the, the city how, but, of the state. Construction had been halted, right? It hadn't started. Right, it hadn't This was started, to prevent right. it from starting. Right, right, right. okay. Um, the judge held a hearing and was persuaded by the city, state, and the feds that the only thing they were gonna do was build this stormwater system and clear some trees. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, that's going to be good for the lake. It's a, good for the lake, not in a big way, in a very tiny way, but it is. And if that's all they're going to do now, that, I'll let them go that far, but they don't go any farther until we have had hearings and there's been a ruling on the environmental right. issues mm -hmm. and that no construction next year until that happens. That's what he said. And this thing has bounced around since then. He's issued other orders and they become at least in the minds of the city and the state, more ambiguous to the point where they think now they can do whatever they want to do. And they, they are, are, right? Just about are. Mm -hmm. They're down there just doing whatever they want to do. And it's all claimed to be part of the stormwater system. Or Now they're saying the Englesby Ravine culvert, which I talked about, that's part of stormwater. It's not, mm -hmm. it's just not. Uh, and but this, we are hoping on Friday that the judge will clarify. What's what on meant. Friday? What's gonna be on Friday? A, there's gonna be a, what do you call it now? It's a, not a conference, status, status conference. conference. And we've asked him to please clarify what you meant because the city and state are saying one thing and we think it said another, just clarify you know, one way or the other. We don't know where to go right. or I mean, we can if, go. If they're violating the order, no one's gonna get arrested about it, right? As far as it's I know. that kind of a thing. I know. And I think what they're trying to do is the state and the city, as I said, to give them an inch to take a mile. They're just trying to do enough stuff out there that the judge just won't, let them say there's no way going back. Mm -hmm, We're mm -hmm. just going to get that part of the project done. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think they may succeed at that. I, 
they're doing much more than I think he thought they'd ever do. And at first he thought, well, I can just make them undo the things that they've oh, done. No, but I, if you do enough happen. stuff, they, they're thinking, he's not going to do that. It costs, it costs more money to undo it than to do it. Right. And where's that going to come from? Yeah, so, right. But on the environmental justice, because no work is taking place at this end of the project, I think we will win that if we can make it, if we get a but chance. But then what would it mean if you did win it? Well, I mean, we don't know yet. It means because this to, is clearly the one of the um, lowest income neighborhoods. This in the qualifies city. as a minority and low income neighborhood, which is what the also with, environmental justice regulations and laws are designed to protect. Mm -hmm. And that's not doesn't seem to be contested now. That's that's a fact. We have a question: Is uh, any citizen participation needed for Friday? If people would like to come to the federal courthouse, I we would, would welcome it. And I can't remember um, if it's two or two thirty. I believe it's two thirty, and it's. I don't know that there'll be testimony, but the judge is going to have this in open court, some kind of a conference, and people are more than welcome. And I would say encouraged. We'd like to see you there. Yeah, yeah. Are there other questions? Oh, yeah. Diane? Let's see, can you hear me? I can barely hear. Okay. <laughs> um, so yes, it's 2.30 as far as I know. Um, and I was um, typing in that Cindy Hill, the lawyer will need support there. Um, so I do think if people go, that would be a great idea. It would be um, a good idea to go. I say, show up. Yes. The judge would like to, I think the last time we had a hearing, there were quite a few people yeah, there. No, I think I the there. judge, yeah was impressed that there were people that cared about this. It wasn't just a couple of lawyers arguing amongst themselves. So I say, be there. It would be good, a good idea. It always is a good idea to show up in court because really important decisions are made, especially on local decisions. This is a very important issue. Okay, are there other questions or comments? Okay. Um, oh, we have uh, 30, Who's that? We can't hear through this. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, Barely. now. Yeah. Um, so I think you're saying that, uh, Steve, that this is not a hundred percent done deal. Oh, um, by, at this point, that that we can, we can still keep fighting this. It's by far not a hundred percent deal. In fact, I think it's very close to a hundred percent. Winnable. Winnable on the environmental justice question. And but winning it, not sure what the judge, let's say he rules in our favor, what he would do? Would, would he require a whole new environmental impact statement on the whole road? Or would he say, well, this part of it's done. We're not going back there. We'll just look at the Northern section. But that would be a win. Anything that gets them to go back and look at a plan that requires this road to go through Maple and King and not divert around it, any decision that supports that would be great. And I think that's very, very winnable. And the judge even hinted in an earlier hearing that he thought that was our strong point. He didn't think some of our environmental concerns were weighty enough at the time and timely enough, but he thought that the, uh, he thought that the environmental justice stuff, that was good stuff. He's not saying he's gonna rule on it in our favor, but he was holding that out as he thought that was a stronger, Strongest part of our case. Do we so, uh, have far from over? One one problem, though, Diane, as you know, is that lawyers cost a lot of money, and so the people who have the money and the power in this community have put a lot of money into this situation, um, and the opposition are just normal people like Steve, and we and it's difficult to pay the legal fees that are necessary to keep this fight going. Yep. So if anybody cares to donate for our lawyers, that would be wonderful. And that would be, I don't know. Do well, I think now, just go back a step. Tony Reddington was a big part of this project. He ran our website, he ran our fundraising, and he died recently. And we're trying to pick up the pieces from that. But if somebody- He was also in charge of a lot of the money yeah. that was raised, right? Yes. And if people are interested in what they can do, the best I can say now is if you go to our webpage, which is, um, I don't know if this can be shown anywhere. No, because but, where people-, people show up, My Sweet Coalition's webpage, and it looks a little different. For some reason, when I printed it out, it didn't print the box, it said email. But you could email us 
and ask us questions or say you'd like to donate and we would get back in touch with you. We're trying to set up a new way to donate now. Uh, I think so, send it to my post office box. Well, no, I'd rather just yeah. email yeah, us right. and we'll have a communication. Yeah. We don't want to just accept checks at this point or anything. We would want to you know where it's going and make sure we have a bank account that we control that it's going into. So that's that's my suggestion. If people want to help, that's mm -hmm. the best way. And show up. Show up, for instance, at this uh, this status conference. Right. Right. So um, I should say that that um, in meetings, um, Steve is now sort of in charge of where Tony was in charge in terms of this Pine Street Coalition. And it's critical that the money um, go into a new account. Um, Correct. Because what we learned was that some of the accounts that had been set up on websites um, really weren't useful. Um, I can hear it. Yes, you make the right point, Diane. I'm, I'm now picking up from Tony, but I have a long way to go to get fully up to speed. But one of the first things we're going to do is to set up a, an account, a bank account, probably at Opportunities Credit Union, and everything will track through there. And there'll be just an easy way to know where it came in and where it went. And that's uh, that's something that's about to happen, but it does it has not happened yet. So I would encourage people if they're interested in donating or participating to email us, and we would give them instructions when this is Why ready. Why don't you say what your email is? I don't have the. Uh, there, there's a box here. I, this is one of these things Tony knew, mm -hmm. but there's a box on the on the web page, and it says email us. If you click that box, you would be able to email us. Uh -huh. I don't even know what the email is. That's something he set up, and I have to learn more about it. Who it shows might, it might even way. be his email, so something we have to correct. There's something we're working on, and shows, don't don't do anything unless you've heard from us. Is I guess the best right, but it. that shows how many people are indispensable, and Tony Reddington certainly was for this was, project. We're trying to replace him, right? There's right. going to be a memorial service for him. There soon. was it was going to be last Saturday, but there was a, some illness in his family. They canceled it. I think uh -huh. that will happen. But it's it's hard because he died unexpectedly, and there was not a the ability to have some kind of a smooth transition. All of a sudden, he was gone. He had all his passwords. He had all the rights to everything, and we slowly begin to piece that back together so that we can continue with the same framework, but other people now taking over some of the responsibilities. So. Um, I will ask another question unless somebody else has anything to say or a question. Yes? Eric? Someone has to uh, okay. ask her to unmute herself. Sally Ballin has her hand up. Yeah. Can't really hear. I, I'm just wondering if there is some counter proposal. Um, in in people's minds, if if you're thinking along the lines of what might, instead of having this carving another highway into Burlington, what alternative there might be for moving people? I, I think I hear around. what you're saying. You're wondering what alternative would it be to the court fight? And well, actually, I'm well, with you on to that. having a highway and relying on automobiles. I, I can't hear you very clearly. I'm wondering what alternative there would be to having highways and more automobiles of, if or this isn't the moment to- Alternative to, to what? Oh, alternative to? Alternative to highways and automobiles. Oh, okay. That, the only way that could happen is if a judge ruled there needed to be a new environmental impact statement for the whole project, and that would be a topic. There'd be what would be called a no build option. But I think the way that they're setting this up, that's getting less and less likely because they, by the time the judge makes a decision, they'll have built half of it. And you're not going to un, I don't think you're going to unbuild it, unfortunately. So I, I think that was always something to think about. But that train may have left the station because they're, they're building it right now. If the judge had stopped them and then issued a, order that to be a new environmental impact statement, I think that could have happened, but I think it's looking less and less likely by the day. But we may be able to at least save everything north of Lakeside in this neighborhood through our actions and the environmental justice criteria. Okay, there um, may be some other stuff too, but 
We don't know. There are other questions, Eric? Other questions? Oh. I, I do want to ask about uh, other cities. I think you mentioned to me once that other cities are not doing this kind of project any longer and that they're being actually taken out of those cities. Some cities so, are taking it out. So why? Mean, why then is Burlington going backwards? I think it's just personalities and egos. I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, if what you know, other cities you, are, well, are- Boston had something they called the big dig. The big dig, they right. They took a and roadway, Portland, which went right the through pit. the city and it was a separated grade. So this thing was lower than the rest of the roads around it. And eventually they ended up putting it underground and built parks and other stuff on top. So there's no more roadway separating the neighborhoods and the vicinities of Boston. So that's an example about undoing this. Pete Buttigieg, who is the Secretary of Transportation now, has talked about undoing some of these, Super these things that, in the past that have been done. Some of them you can't undo, but some you probably can. And you're going to see that happen. It takes a lot of planning and a lot of time. But that's the direction. Nobody's actually building new things like that today, like we except are. Burlington. Except Burlington. And, why and we're using that? this old funding mechanism from the seventies and sixties. Which and 70s. is what? That's the MEGC funding. Yeah. So it's everything's old about this project. It's a dinosaur, and well, it really it, didn't why? have to happen. Yeah. I think we gave them, as I said, when we got the Just federal to, attorney to yeah. say you got to redo this EIS. That was the moment this thing could have really turned around. Just like the uh, circumvention highway has turned around but they just wouldn't do it. And by they, who you mean? State, the feds, city? and the city. Wow. Three of them, each one would say, if the other one wants to do something, they'll consider it. And the other one would say, well, no, you have to choose. It's like, just pointing the finger at each other saying, you're gonna decide whether we can do this or not. And nobody decided. What they really were doing behind the scenes is sticking together and making sure nothing changed. And this thing just pulled ahead and got built. That's what they intended to do. That's what the documents we have show that they basically said, we're not going to consider anything. And the way it changes, it costs money or time. Mm -hmm. And almost anything you do costs money or time. So they basically just said, we're just sticking with it. And that's the way it's going to be. And they just covered everything up, whitewashed everything. They're going ahead now and they're trying to do it as fast as they can before so a judge be on, tells them right, to stop so and, and, and make them undo it. And I don't right. think he will. I hate to say it, but um, I don't think he will. So having just been at um, Curtis Lumber, um, they said that they were, th that the road, the way it's designed now for the future to go through Curtis Lumber was incredibly upsetting to them. It took out more buildings than um, they can afford to have happen and that they were now starting legal process. So I well, thought that was interesting because that's the other end, end of the road. And, and I, I think what has to happen then is a different route may have to be found or some way to make them whole. I think that could be a problem. Uh, that's right, because they need that space. But with the, the problem with that though is of course, once they build this version and they build the version that goes up Pine to Maine and across King and, and Maple, once they do that, if people are gonna contest the, rail enterprise project, which would reroute the traffic around the neighborhood, it'll never happen. They'll never, this neighborhood will just have this new traffic imposed on it and there'll never be any relief. Mm. And that's part of the problem of what's going on today. Everyone's got to get on the same page. We have to find a way. If we don't, then all the promises that the rail enterprise project will take care of the problems that the connector causes with traffic, it's not going to happen. And that's what we're concerned about. They can say they're going to do the project but if you're going to have legal challenges that's going to delay it i also know that the recent meeting or hearing they had at city hall about that project it was very clear from the engineers for the city who are managing the project that there's no money there's not anywhere near enough money for the project right now the money does not exist for that project and as the mayor apparently has said if the school if the high school tax or the high school bond passes there probably will not be any more capital money in the city for oh, at yeah, least yeah. 10 years. Wow. So that includes any capital money that might go to the rail enterprise project. So our concern is that the rail enterprise project now is being held up as the answer to the problems that the Southern Connector will create for King and Maple, but it's a pipe dream. Something has to change. It's a pipe dream. And they probably should not have built the piece of building now if it's dependent on that 
real enterprise project because it's going to be the second row of the nowhere. It's just going to sit unused. Mm. And one interesting fact people should know also, back in the 90s, they were about to build the same section of roadway they're building now. And at the time, Governor Dean, at the last minute, they were ready to go out to bid. He personally intervened and said, you're not going forward with this project until you figure out what you're going to do with the North End. So we've been here before. The governor stopped it. But somehow, memories get fuzzy and the feds and the state go back to their old ways and keep pushing the project again. And now we're trying to do the same thing, stop it. And I wish we'd stopped it before they spent a lot of money on what they're doing now, because that could be another road to nowhere for a long time. And when people see how big a project it is, that it's not one road, but it's three roads in some areas, it's just going to blow some minds mm. of what this, of the waste and the, and the archaicness of this thing at this point. But it could be so much better, so much better. All right. Any final thoughts, comments? Show up Friday. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just, so I just want to say I, I sure wish we were building a light rail system or something sensible for this era in the future and not the destroying well, neighborhoods you're right for well, what high, a, more one roads of the, and more cars one of the curses of this has been so sometimes when a project has money you end up with a worse project a project has to work for its legitimacy you end up with something better but this project had this megc funding which was like just raining money do whatever you want doesn't going to cost the city hardly anything and that's been a curse in the end because the city has come up with this boondoggle that they don't have to worry about the public supporting it or not because the feds are paying for almost all of it and you end up with something like this. It seems like it's sort of out of control. And instead of looking at something like, what were the alternatives? And we gave them that chance to do that again in the last few years and they refused to do it. They could have looked at the whole thing again, looked at it in light of 2020 designs and 2020 needs and 2020 understandings. No, they're looking at it in terms of 1960 and 1970 wow. understandings. That's what we're stuck with. And it's it's egos. You got you have a mayor who knows, and I don't, I'm not a big fan, but he knows what's right here. This isn't like he thinks this is really good and no problem, let's do it. He knows it's really bad. And he's trying to come up with ways to fix it later when they should have just stopped it and not gone forward until they could do it right the first time, which is sort of our motto. Let's not do it and then have to fix it. Let's just wait, take a breath redesign and do it right. I just want to um, add that as as Steve knows, the problems are from one end to the other and and we're no longer talking about the first leg of it um, because that's sort of underway. But the dead ending of Pine Street as it arrives in South Burlington is one of the really critical pieces that's missing in this whole puzzle as well. So right. As yep. you said, from start to finish, it's problematic. And one thing to note that's of interest, I've seen correspondence where the mayor and the public works director have asked the state and the feds if they can change that. They know that's wrong now. Maybe it looked pretty good 20 years ago, 30 years ago. It doesn't look good now. They asked if that could be changed and they were told no. Mm -hmm. So they know better. They want to change it too. Why they aren't fighting harder for it or why they didn't, I don't really know, but they do know that that's not good. And yeah. they also know that this stuff that's going to happen up at King Maple and Pine is not good, yet they somehow feel they'll be able to fix it sometime in the future. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. We're almost out of time. Are there any other questions? Last? I have a question. I have a question, Steve. I hear you. Go ahead. So my question is regarding the rail yard enterprise project. Uh, I'm told that 90% of the cost will be covered by federal and state funds for the rail yard enterprise project. But I'm curious that's what they're saying. Yes. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Still, I mean, that's 10% of something that could be a very large sum of money. Do you know what Correct. the estimated cost is for that rail yard enterprise and how much well, we would be on for I, because I do I see thought, pushing for that to alleviate the traffic flow from the Maple King neighborhood. At this meeting that I was at a month or so ago, 
they had some numbers and it was in the 25 or $27 million range. But then one of the city engineers stood up and said, but we know that's wrong. We know it's much, much higher. So they're going, they're, they're doing some numbers preliminarily now, but they know it's much higher. And the one wild card is when you do these projects, well, most of the money might be covered by the state or the feds, anything to do with dealing with pollution, dealing with contamination in the ground, that will not be covered by them. That's solely on the city. Mm. And if you know anything about rail yards, they are the, about the dirtiest places because the rail companies have been exempt from most of the environmental pollution laws forever. And so a lot of stuff can happen on those properties and they don't have to be accountable for them. But if you're gonna build a road and start digging and doing other activities out there, you're gonna to have to deal with it. So that cost alone, even if a lot of the regular stuff is being paid for by the state and the feds, the pollution stuff is all on us. And God knows what's out there. So it could be quite a, unfortunately, quite a bill. We don't know yet though, they haven't done that work, but even their own engineers are saying at the hearing that the estimate now was way low and there is not enough money currently identified to build this project, rail enterprise project. Right, yeah, I, I, I appreciate I appreciate your time. answer. Okay. Go, go ahead. I think I'm I sorry. Hear you. Oh, I appreciate your answers. My, my other question is the mode of conveyance is, is are we talking about a raised a road that goes through the rail yard or are we talking about cars that are going to have to share the right of way with trains coming through? No, no, it's, it'd be a, a road. It'd be a two lane okay. road. Okay. Connecting okay. from basically Kilburn Street roughly going diagonally to Battery Street. Thank you. All right, well, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Again, if you would like to support uh, Steve and his Pine Street Coalition, which, trying, which is attempting to make a better uh, road here for the neighborhood in particular, please, you could send- Email us, go to this website and click the, the email website button and we'll see if we can get back to that. And figure out maybe a way that you could donate for our legal expenses or for Steve and the Pine Street Coalition's legal expenses. And thank you very much for joining us. And we will be back in a couple of weeks. Again, thanks, Andrew Christensen, who is now the owner of the King Street Laundry. And he has made this space available to us and to other people who will use this laundry as a laundry, as you can all tell from the people coming in, but as a real place to do real educational events. So thank him, thank the King Street Laundry, and thank everybody for being with us tonight. Thank you.